No, no not today, because you're signing in on that. already signed Okay, in. one of those for me? Thank you. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you could all make it. My name is Lori Hammetry. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a certified diabetes educator. That Your name is what? I'm sorry, Lori. I'm Lori Hammetry. Okay, just want to, for the record. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is Rose Kudo. She's, I know that. She's, the, she's a, a nurse that works in the diabetes education program also. She's also a certified diabetes educator. She's very fair. I'm not paying them either. <laughs> we would like to, you know, be able to give you some uh, information so that you can kind of work on some goals. That you, that, uh, it might be activity. It might be maybe checking your blood sugars if you're not doing that. Uh, it may be looking at just being more active in your lifestyle. So this is not only diabetes management information, but diabetes prevention information. So if you don't have diabetes and you're trying to prevent getting diabetes, the information is the same. It's eating healthy, getting exercise. These are the things that help to keep you healthy. And that's a, the goal, is to try to keep you healthy. Um, now, some of you have mentioned that you do have diabetes. And it, we know that diabetes can really uh, impact your lifestyle. Now, how many of you have felt that it has certainly changed the way you have you are living? Is it more mobility issues, or is it more general health issues? Eating issues. Eating issues. Well, yeah. Right. Okay. Me. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest things that diabetes seems to do. It, it, it's uh, it's a disease that tends to love um, lots of planning, predetermined meals. Uh, and so if you're kind of a spontaneous person and are kind of fly by the seat of your pants kind of person, it really uh, impacts the way you approach certainly your, your eating. The goal is really to kind of just give you an overview of how food's digested, how sugar ends up in your bloodstream, so that you have a good understanding of how the whole metabolic process works. And then from there, look at how does exercise improve. How does eating improve that? And where does the, the where are the carbs? Carbohydrates mm -hmm. are the are the uh, fuels for your muscles and your brain. Where do they come from? And how do we manage them? Carbohydrates the enemy of a pre diabetic or diabetic. Good question. No, they're not the enemy. Uh, it's always trying to figure out how much is okay and what kinds of a carb is a carb, they say. A carbohydrate is a carbohydrate. Um, not all carbohydrates are equal, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so we do encourage you to, to use, try to pick foods that are going to give you energy that are probably a little slower absorbed. Um, well, let me get it to oh, okay. how it works, and then you will <laughs> give you some information on how, you know, what foods we're looking at. Okay, so does anybody have any idea how uh, food ends up in your blood? It okay. breaks, something breaks down sugar. So it goes into your stomach, right? Okay. You get your stomach here. Your stomach's kind of like this big organ here. You have a liver that kind of is over here, kind of covers the stomach. Okay. And then you have intestines. And then you have a pancreas that kind of sits right about here. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> and then, so food into the mouth, down through the stomach. Now food's made of what? Carbs. Carbs. Yeah, what else? Carbs, sugar. Protein. Protein. Ooh. What else? Fats. Okay. Fiber. Yep. What else do you get in food? Carbs, protein, fiber. Yeah, those are your macronutrients. Now, you, man, this is where your energy is coming from. Your protein, your fat, your carbohydrates. Okay, so those are your energy foods. They all have, we measure uh, energy in the form of calories. So protein, fat, carbohydrates all provide us calories or energy. 
Um, what goes in is the food that we're eating. Mm -hmm. What goes out is what our bodies use in the course of the day, meaning to, for our hearts to beat, for our blood to circulate, for our brains to function, and for our lungs to breathe, we need energy. Protein, fat, carbohydrates all give us energy. So energy in, energy out. So the energy out is what we use to burn. The energy in is the energy that we consume. Okay. Food. Food, right. So all of this, protein, fat, carbs, all end up in our blood. Not all. I mean, you get absorption of, of quite a bit of it through your intestinal wall. So as food gets broken down into, into uh, smaller pieces in our stomach and then enter our intestines, our, our, uh, as the sugar starts to get into our blood, meaning the carbohydrates, they get uh, broken down into glucose molecules, get absorbed into the bloodstream as, as glucose. So then our blood sugars start to rise. Well, that sends off a whole set of kind of reactions of the body. As the blood sugars start to go up, your pancreas is really sensitive to the sugar level in your bloodstream. Your pancreas makes insulin. Insulin's job is to move energy into your muscles. It's a storage hormone that stores your energy somewhere. So you have muscle cells all over. To get the sugar, glucose, into this, uh, to, to get it across this wall, you need insulin to, to actually signal doorways on this muscle wall to open. Insulin's job is to hook up with these little receptor sites here. So this is insulin. And that sets off this chemical reaction that allows these doorways to open so that glucose or sugar can get into your muscle. Is that from the pancreas you said? No, I yeah. So the insulin's made by a pancreas. So it travels with glucose through your blood vessels to your muscles. <coughs> to get that sugar across that wall, you have to open the doorways. Insulin's job is to signal those doorways to open so that energy can get into your muscles. And so, if you overeat carbohydrates, now what happens if we sit, right? We have a huge meal, and this happens how, how often, right? Dinner is your biggest meal of the day, and what do you do? You go sit down and watch TV after that. Where are you? So then, you have, now the muscles aren't going to use much of that carbohydrate. So what happens is the liver now can convert some of that sugar into triglycerides and store it away as fat. So we get the formation of fat, uh, fat cell, fat formation in the bloodstream, but it also ends up getting stored away into the fat cells in the body. So that's where some of the weight gain comes from when you overeat carbohydrates, is you get the formation of triglycerides, which is a fat source in your bloodstream and it ends up getting stored in your fat cells. So your carbohydrates, even though they're a great source of energy for your muscles, if you overeat them, that's where the weight gain comes from. Is everybody okay with that? Do you have a basic understanding of where, what where, happens? Where, 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 the where does that start in, in, in the liver? No. Where, where no, the liver can make um, triglycerides from sugar. Okay, extra sugar or just sugar? Yeah, well, what's not getting into what the muscles don't use is ends up getting uh, converted into fat, stored as fat. So if you're not moving, right. your muscles aren't going to use much. And so you're going to end up getting a lot of fat storage out of that meal. Into your liver. Some of it gets stored in your liver. And we have problems with two people that eat too much carbohydrates. They end up with what we call a non-alcoholic fatty liver. You have one of those? Fatty liver, yes, they do. Yeah. And so some of that gets stored in the liver and can cause some damage to the liver, but a lot of it also gets stored in, in, in the body fat cells, usually around the abdomen, but pretty much all over the place. So what happens when, so we know that extra carbs end up as, as fat. What happens when you have a family history of, di of diabetes or you have other risk factors for diabetes. Now, what, what do you think of risk factors? What puts you more at risk for getting diabetes? 
Family history, right. Weight gain, right. Age. Age, correct. Being sedentary. Right, not moving. Because we're not, that means, you know, we're not getting a lot of, uh, we're not using much of that carbohydrate. Just Love carbohydrates. Yeah. <laughs> Most people do. You know, they're, they're pretty addictive. Does the high blood pressure and the high cholesterol something to play at all? Honestly, that's a good question. It, uh, we know that um, when things start going awry in the body, they seem to go as a package. The, what they call a metabolic syndrome is when all of a sudden you have insulin resistance. We're gonna, I'm going to explain what that is. And it's coupled with a rise in the blood pressure and a rise in the cholesterol levels. They seem to all come together. You know, it's like the perfect storm, right? So insulin resistance. So let's talk a little bit about that. So we have a family history of diabetes, and then we say we hurt our back, and we're all, all of a sudden we're not as active and we're sedentary. And we put on 10 or 15 pounds because now we're eating the same because we're creatures of habit. So our eating habits don't change, but our activity level does. Mm -hmm. So weight, you start to gain 10 or 15 pounds. And that's like the, it's like lighting a candle. It all of a sudden, this stuff starts to go haywire. So what happens when you have insulin resistance, you put on weight, you get more fat surrounding these muscle cells. Mm -hmm. So what happens, now insulin has to kind of work its way through some of these, this lipid layer around your muscles to get to those receptor sites. So it's got to fight a little bit harder. And when it gets to the muscle, because we're not exercising, the muscle, it attaches to the muscle wall like it normally does, but the muscle ignores it. It says, I'm not opening this doorway. I'll open a few, but I'm not opening a lot. So what does the body do? The pancreas, in order to keep your blood sugar at a normal level, your pancreas makes more insulin. And so you start making larger and larger amounts of insulin to keep this whole system working. This happens over a course of 10 to 15 years. Wow, really? Your pancreas really struggles to try to keep up with that. And so it starts it's making lots of insulin. So what happens? Now, insulin is a storage hormone. So the more insulin your body makes, the more it wants to store food. And so we, we see more and more weight gain. People tell me, I don't know, I didn't change anything. All of a sudden, I started to gain all this weight. So you have weight gain and you have, so this makes this worse because you get more fat cells around these, these muscles. So, it makes, so then it, the pancreas is making more and more insulin. At some point, the, pay, the beta cells, the cells that make insulin, start to get really tired. And they start not making as much insulin. Overworked. Overworked, underpaid, definitely. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so they start saying, I'm not doing it anymore. And so the insulin levels start to decline, and then the blood sugars start to go up. And that's where you see fasting glucose levels, that's where we get how do we determine who has diabetes, who doesn't, is that that morning blood sugar when you haven't eaten for 12 hours, when we see those numbers starting to climb, we know that we're having a problem with the pancreas. The pancreas is no longer making enough insulin. Okay. Does that so make sense? Pancreas, yeah. The pancreas doesn't make enough insulin. Yes. So the blood sugars rise. That yes. Sense? How do we manage that? Well, we got to work on insulin resistance. Because the insulin's not working well. We already know that. We, we know that we have too much fat around these muscles and that we're not active enough. So how do we fix, how do we improve insulin resistance? Medications. One of the medications.